my name is Jakob Geisberger, and uh, I'm glad I can talk about uh, my and uh, the work of my colleague Norman Weick about combining operative train simulation with logistics simulation in Zumo. And uh, both of us are also from the German Aerospace Center and our research uh, focuses on railway operations. And I'll um, do this like, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. And um, I will talk about um, the motivation at first, introduce our methodology and talk about a proof of concept afterwards in some last slide about discussion and further research. All right, so the motivation behind um, are actually uh, those two major challenges in railway operations, especially in freight railway operations. And these are flexibility and reliability. And in order to um, tackle or enhance one of these, reliability, there are many different methods and calculations, simulation models um, in order to improve reliability of single train runs, but also of a whole railway network. But most of these uh, actually, um, especially from the railway side, focus on trains, but um, not on goods. So they concentrate um, on how trains run through a system. And the idea now is that it's actually the goods that need to come from A to B. So um, it would be a better way to um, increase um, the freight railway or to enhance the freight railway evaluation methods by um, actually analyzing transport chains. So the goods that come from A to B and not only the trains. Um, and we can have a look at the two different disciplines here. It's logistics on the one side and railway operations on the other side. And in logistics, we always talk about the flow of goods and supply chain is, is a major term here. But when it comes to transport, actually, um, it's a rather abstract understanding of transport. So it's um, seldomly that um, railway or means of transport specific um, specifics are taken into account and um, logistics simulation often uh, are used to, um, to support decision making many of them are macroscopic you know the other side that's what i do a lot um, uh, railway operation simulations or analysis tools they co um, focus on delay propagation on capacity um, and it's all about the railway specifics. Um, they have a very high level of detail and they are quite microscopic, but they um, have a hard time simulating um, larger networks. So the idea is that we need something in between in order to um, analyze transport chains. Um, so the logistical side, but still take into account railway specifics. And um, we derived some requirements from the two disciplines in order to analyze what does actually such a model need. And um, of course, I can do this here. We need timetables uh, when it comes to railway operations. And we have a lot of uh, very railway specific um, parameters and input such as signaling or the driving dynamics. And uh, we have also a very um, special infrastructure in railway operations, the tracks, they have some <laughs> specifics that come with them. And um, we always talk a lot about capacity when it comes to railway, because um, most of them, most of the corridors in our railway network are quite densely operated. Um, Large networks, that's a huge topic, actually, because as I told, um, many of the, the, the common railway analysis tools um, more or less concentrate or focus on um, single lines or single trains. Um, so that's another requirement here. Um, routing, a very, very important uh, requirement to a model, as I told, and um, yeah, from the logistics side, uh, one or well, the um, most important requirement is modeling single goods as agents in order to um, merge goods and trains to route transport chains. 
we always need a demand, of course, and extensive output possibilities. Yeah, and now you get an idea um, why I'm talking here to you at the SUMO conference, because SUMO fulfills quite a lot of these criteria. It might not be all of them, but it's quite a lot. Um, and it's actually suitable to um, have both the railway specifics and also the logistic specifics, um, meaning the transport chains implemented in one model. How does this work? Well, the mythology behind is uh, split up or parted in, into three sections, the input data, the model itself, and then kind of an analysis part, um, which you can see here to the right. And um, there is a very important term here to the left um, when it comes to input data, and that's the so-called integrated clock phase timetables. And um, as I guess many of you might not be very familiar with uh, railway specific terms, I'll quickly uh, jump to the next slide in order to uh, explain what this actually means. Um, you all know timetables and um, clock phase or pi periodic timetables are such timetables where train rides cyclically repeat within a certain interval, which means a train comes every hour, for example, as you might know. Um, and um, if this is identical in both directions, we call this timetable symmetric. And then if we take this one step further, um, we speak of integrated clock phase timetables. And um, that's symmetric uh, interval timetables that are network widely coordinated. And um, this is to reduce transfer times. So this is a, a network perspective on doing a whole um, timetable um, optimization. Actually, it's, it's quite mathematical in order to create these timetables. You can see one to the right. And um, the good thing when it comes to our simulation model is it comprises information on both passenger and freight trains and not only on passenger trains, because freight trains are for the first time, to be honest, uh, included here with pre-reserved so-called system paths. So they have predefined paths within the whole timetable construct um, in order to have um, their own priority paths. And these paths actually comprise uh, information on logistical processes, so where the freight trains go and where um, freight is transshipped. So that's what we have as a large input here to the left. And of course, we need the demand as well. And um, we have OSM where we took the railway infrastructure data from. Um, we need to define the rolling stock, of course, and after a lot of conversion and processing, I will not go into detail here. Um, it, it can be quite time consuming, but it does not have to be uh, in order to uh, have a large railway network in Sumo. Um, we have the model where we have the trains, the containers, and um, how, somehow uh, how they are matched, actually. Um, and you all know the, the according sumo files. So it's the container stops and the bus stops in the sumo additional file. And we have trains and cont um, containers in the root files and how they are matched. So here in our um, model, containers are matched to train lines. So they um, can take different trains having the same route. And what's emerging, that's the container plan or the transport chain, as we call it. And um, what comes out of the, the model are not only the train trajectories, but also the container trajectories. And I'll quickly show you um, how it looks when we apply this on a proof of concept here. We took a network from the northwest of Germany, which is quite uh, suitable here for um, such an analysis because it contains harbors and quite some large shunting yards. And if you have a look here to, to the um, north, this is the city, the harbor city of Kiel. And I uh, brought one exemplary container trajectory here with you because uh, for you, because um, it's about uh, proving that this combined um, simulation approach works and um, you would maybe not see 
um, as clear the information um, if it was more than one container trajectory here. So um, we have a transshipment in the large shunting yard of Maschen, south of Hamburg, which is a large, I think the largest actually transshipment yard um, in Germany. And then there is a second um, system pass or path or freight um, train run from Maschen to Hamm, where the container is uh, taken to its destination. And um, as I told you, the train stations and yards are converted to sumo um, additional files and the timetable, as I explained to you before, um, is converted to sumo trips. What actually <clears throat> can be analyzed here in order to prove that um, there is a, a combined approach is um, to check whether, <coughs> I'm sorry, whether the effects of disturbed train operations on um, transported goods can be seen. And that's what um, these curves show you here. So the first red curve here is an undisturbed um, container trajectory, but it's all about the container here, the single good, it's not about the trains. Um, so we have the, the, the train of container number one running at 100 kilometers per hour, um, because it's its maximum speed from Kiel to Maschen. And of course, we have some uh, bends in the curve here because um, not all the section of the network have the same speed. And this here is, is the kind of a network bottleneck around the city of Hamburg, where it um, can't go as fast as usually. Um, and when it comes, uh, is taken to the yard of Maschen, it is transshipped, so the um, speed is zero here, and then it takes another um, system path from Maschen to Hamm, and we can see here the specifics again. And um, the idea now behind um, the combined approach is that we actually need to see the effects of disturbed train operation on the single container trajectories. And that's what we can see here. So um, this freight train um, taking container two is uh, disturbed in operation, which is quite usual in train operations. Um, this is a delayed commuter train running before the freight train, so it has to stop and in order to wait until the tracks are free. And what you can see here is that it has to wait um, to pass um, the network bottleneck because um, there are many other trains running through the system here. Um, and that's what we can see on the level of containers. And then we have the large um, time of transshipment again, and the container is taken to hum here again. And uh, container or example number three is um, the other way around here. Uh, <clears throat> the container or the train taking the container is rerouted. So it has to take another route because of a track closure, for example. So this speed profile looks completely different. And yeah, we can take this one step further um, by visualizing this in a very um, traditional visual, uh, timetable visualization method in railway operations. This is a classical railway diagram uh, having time from the top to the bottom and distance from the left to the right. And um, we can see the two effects here again. So this is uh, the train stopping um, in example number two. And this means the container itself loses time. And um, here we can see the green line to the bottom, um, which tells us that it has to take a bit longer route, which is of course due to the rerouting. Um, so we have um, these operational effects on containers here, and that's exactly what we wanted to prove. And um, it's quite nice for us, us railway guys to have containers in this visualization um, diagram here. All right, um, so um, the, the idea behind this combined approach was to model logistical process on the level of individual agents, so called container chains, and at the same time, take into account railway specifics in order to analyze the implications of train operations, such as conflicts or delays on the level of single agents transported by trains. 
Um, and that's exactly what, what these curves showed before. And there's quite a large or huge potential here when it um, comes to further research and especially to research on the reliability of railway transportation networks. Because um, now we can, by taking these, these further and by bundling or aggregating all these container chains, we can have a system-wide analysis of railway transportation network reliability on the level of goods and not only trains. So we need, uh, so we get a, a clue on how the reliability actually is on the goods which actually initiated the transport. And it can be a starting point for studies on both train and container routing. Um, so we did not have dynamic intermodal routing implemented here um, yet, which is possible for persons as agents in SUMO, but not for containers. Um, but we are working on this in order to enable the containers, for example, changing their route or their, where they are transshipped dynamically when um, maybe according to, to the, the capacities in order to assign the um, transshipment and also the track capacities um, as needed in a dynamic process. And it's also important about um, the Sea Harbor hinterland traffic, which is quite a huge discussion here in Germany. Um, and the discussion always is whether the capacity bottleneck is in the harbor or in the Sea Harbor hinterland um, on the railway tracks. So this can be further analyzed here. Okay. Yep. So far from my side. Thanks for listening and I'm happy to, to answer uh, your questions. Yeah.